Thank you, Dr. Graves. Next, we're going to hear from Mr. Jamie Baldridge. His talk is entitled, Beauty from Chaos, Obsessive Compulsive Disorder and the Creative Process. Anybody here? My lecture is a little different. I'm from the art department, you know, so that makes everything a little bit different. None of my slides have cues on them, so I actually may have to cheat every once in a while and walk over here and just take a glance. <laughs> Uh, at the age of 42, I've learned that there are a few gibbons in life who never ever play poker with a guy who has a first name from a city in Texas. <laughs> You'll lose your shirt. Never eat sushi at a truck stop unless you want to find out how clean the next truck stop bathroom is 30 mm -hmm. miles down the road. It's happened to me, I'm serious. And never ever consult WebMD at 3 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> you will not be reassured. But the rest of the world enjoying their morning tea and having a nice dawn with the rest of their family, I have just been informed by the wisdom of the internet that my splitting headache is most probably a brain tumor or possibly being gay fever. <laughs> I happen to have obsessive compulsive disorder, which is defined by the DSM-4's recurrent and persistent thoughts, urges, and impulses that are unwanted, and they cause some marked anxiety or distress. Individuals with OCD tend to try to neutralize these thoughts either by ignoring them or by neutralizing them with some sort of compulsory action. Um, in neurological terms, let's see if I get this right, <laughs> it's a dysfunction in the neuronal loop between the orbital frontal cortex, the signate, told you I was going to <laughs> because this is really interesting, the, the cingulate gyrus down to the striatum into the globus pallidus, back in the thalamus, and back up to the orbital frontal cortex again. And round and round it goes in an infinite and impenetrable loop of what ifs and worry. I always think of it like a Morrissey record just stuck with a needle in a groove. Right? You keep going around worrying and worrying. Now, I have been reassured time and time again by every therapist I've ever met. This is simply the malfunctioning of a system exquisitely designed by nature and the downward forces of evolution to make sure I can flee a tiger when it pops out of the morning push. And if there are therapists in here, I beg you to come up with a different metaphor because it's the one I've heard every time I've been in. But this is really cold comfort when you're pacing the floor in the early hours of dawn, now certain that you don't have a tumor or dengue fever, but some other disease that WebMD does not even have in its index yet. <laughs> and you can see as your anxiety spikes, your family hovering around your deathbed, muttering to each other, that poor SOP. <laughs> and you can see your face beneath the disease named after you in the medical textbook. And it's a good photo. I mean, you look nice. Not as good as not being patient zero in a medical textbook, but at least you're looking for a silver lining at this point in time. And you just want it to stop because you've got class in two hours and your tenure packet's due in a week, and there are certainly better things you can be spending your time on. So my, my slides don't have cues, as you notice, so I'm just going over here. Over the years, I've tried every remedy out there to try to improve my psychological station in life. If there's a drug to treat, I have tried it, legal and otherwise, I'll admit it. There were points in time where I was on a pharmaceutical cornucopia that would drop Keith Richards in his tracks. I've explored Zen Buddhism deeply as a panacea against my OCD, and like any good genetics, I have the tactics to prove it. Um, I've even been through every alphabet soup of therapeutic protocols from ACT to CBT, MCT, EMDR, EMRP, uh, QBFI. I made the last one up. But you know where I'm getting with this. I've done everything short of wandering in an ayahuasca haze through the Amazon searching for my spirit. In short, a lot of these things did have some benefit in curbing my compulsions and my obsessions. But what I noticed was that as the sharp edges of my thoughts became less intrusive, my creative urges became similarly dull. It seemed that the cacophony in my mind was really intrinsically tied to my creativity as an artist. And this is the point where I had the speech really well memorized and it all started to kind of fall apart. Because what I really became interested in was I make art because I have OCD, and my OCD is about my art. All of my work is a look into my deep internal state, but it's also driven by the obsessional need to make art. So it's sort of this weird tautological problem that I have. But what I'm really interested in are the parts of obsessive compulsive disorder that have actually been beneficial for me. Now I know that may sound strange. Checking doorknobs, obsessively counting, and hypochondriasis do not sound fun. And they're not. 
But the reality is the very same imagination that can come up with all of these theoretical scenarios, and I've come up with way more than I've told you, trust me on this, can also come up with an incredibly rich world that I can put myself into and have complete control over. And that's really what every OCD sufferer is truly seeking, is control and certainty. Now in a world without control and certainty, I found it within my work. 